Hi, Andreas. You often claim that the banking system is a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> Could you elaborate on that and explain how Bitcoin hopes to solve this atrociousness? Um, I love how passionate you are about asking this question. Um, atrociousness, indeed. Well, here, here's the thing. Here's why um, I have in the past said that banking not only encourages Ponzi schemes, um, and, and allows them to be licensed by the state and covered up for a very long time by complicit um, and captured regulatory systems, but it is itself a Ponzi scheme. Why do I say that? I say that because of a particular feature of commercial banking called fractional reserve banking. And so what is the characteristic of a Ponzi scheme? The characteristic of a Ponzi scheme is that um, is that current investors are being paid from uh, new investors that are being brought in rather than the profits being made by an investment. Um, and fractional reserve has characteristics that are very, very similar. For every dollar that you deposit into a bank, the bank then issues nine additional dollars of commercial loans backed by that one dollar that you put into deposit so that at any moment in time there is um, very little money in the bank that can be returned to depositors and as long as they don't all ask for their money it's okay and the rest is lent out and it's lent out at interest money that was created at zero interest for free essentially and riding on top of this um, scheme, I think it's appropriate to call it the scheme, bankers make um, vast amounts of money. Um, and then of course, you know, that's fair, right? They, they should make money because after all, they're taking risk uh, making these loans because um, when these loans fail, um, they go bankrupt and all of the investors lose. Oh, wait, no, that's not what happens. Wait, hang on a second. Let me check my notes. Bailout, bailout. Bailout, bailout, bailout. Okay, so they don't actually take any risk because if the loans fail, they just get bailed out by the government and given more free money so they can do more fractional reserve and stimulus. And so they're not taking any risk, but they are earning interest. So essentially what they're doing is uh, a practice that in economics is called rent seeking. That's when you use a, um, a preferential position in a stream of money to extract uh, money that has not been earned, that has not the result of risk, but effectively is just uh, rents that you get for something that doesn't even belong to you from a monopoly practice or cartel or oligopoly practice. And in this particular case, that's exactly what commercial fractional reserve banking is. Um, banks, through the Cantillon effect, uh, by being close to the sources of money, get 0% interest or near that from the Federal Reserve, which they then uh, multiply with deposits and produce loans that they charge extravagant amounts of interest um, and um, taking very little risk because if those loans fail, they just get a bailout because they're systemically important. They're too big to fail. And so what this has led to is the financialization of everything, because if without taking risk and by investing free money that's given to you by the Fed, um, you can make more money, uh, then what's the point in investing in productive businesses in uh, any form of risky investment um, or not risky investment? You just throw money at everything. And that creates some perverse incentives in the market. Banking is a Ponzi scheme. How does Bitcoin solve this atrociousness? Well, one of the ways it solves this atrociousness is not by changing that system. That system on itself becomes a very fragile system that has these massive boom-bust cycles. Um, and every time there's a boom or bust, these companies get bailed out through inflation. They, they get bailed out through massive stimulus that basically destroys the savings of anybody who is saving in US dollars. So the way Bitcoin and other systems that may have similar characteristics. Okay, maximalist, sure, not, no other systems ever have similar characteristics. I, I think there are some other systems that, that have some uh, similar characteristics, but especially Bitcoin, especially because of its monetary policy. Um, solves this because it provides people with an exit. It provides people with a way to save outside of that system of the dollar or whatever other currency is being inflated with bailouts. 
um, in a system that preserves its value, or even because it's disinflationary, as is the case in, in Bitcoin, it actually gains in purchasing power just as the national currency declines slowly or sometimes quickly. First slowly, then quickly, then all at once. Um, you gain, you protect your savings. So inflation is a mechanism of hidden taxation. When uh, the Federal Reserve injects money into the economy, what they're doing is they're taking that from the purchasing power of savers. They're making the purchasing power of savers close to zero. Their interest rate that they're earning is zero um, or nearabouts, and the inflation further erodes the purchasing power of their, of their money. Um, the asset bubbles enrich the um, investor class, especially if they're really, really close to the source of stimulus through the Cantillon effect. And essentially, it's a massive, massive wealth transfer from the working class, from um, savers, um, from the middle class, um, into a very, very, very small uh, upper echelon of, of investors, financiers, bankers. So Bitcoin solves this by giving you an exit, by saying, you know what, I'm not going to put my money in a currency that's doing that. I'm going to take my savings, at least some of my savings, maybe a small part of my savings at least, and put it in something else. Take it out of the reach of your inflation game. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. All my work is shared for free. So if you want to support it, join me on Patreon.